Good morning. How are you this week? We're going to look at one of the most fascinating incidents in the whole of the gospel story, and I guess in some ways one of the most controversial. You'll find it in John chapter 2 and the opening verses. Let's read it and then let's find out what's going on. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Now, you'll find a variety of translations in verse 4. Some say, Woman, what is that to me? My time has not yet come. Verse 5, His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding about 20 to 30 gallons. Now you can multiply that out. You can say, just a minute, Richard, what sort of party is this? Now before we get any further into the story, let me tell you something. When the Jews used this wine, it was two parts wine and three parts water. It wasn't exactly strong. All right, let's go on. He told them, fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then Jesus said, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that turned to wine. He didn't realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, you better believe it. Can you imagine this scene? Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you've saved the best till now. This is the first of the miraculous signs Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in Jesus. Now, there are a couple of things to see before we really get into this story. First of all, Jesus was invited to a wedding banquet, and he went, and his disciples went with him. By the way, it was expensive to invite Jesus to supper. Those twelve big fellows came with him and ate. So if you invited one, you got thirteen. You might remember that. The second thing is, will you notice that Jesus accepted the invitation? I don't want to belabor this, but do notice that. I meet some Christians who never mix with the world. They won't even sit down with them, but Jesus did. It was very happy for Jesus to be among people. And we've got to be awfully careful as followers of Jesus that we're willing to go where Jesus went. Isn't it interesting? I've heard people say, oh, I wouldn't go there. Why not? Oh, they're all of the world. Now, what do you mean? You would have let Jesus go, but you won't go? There's something wrong with that. Jesus was totally at home, in a home for a wedding. Now, the weddings in those days were rather different from ours. The bride and groom became king and queen, quite literally, for about a week. And apparently this particular wedding took place on a Wednesday. And if that's true, it's likely that Jesus met Nathaniel on the Sabbath. Well, let's go on. They celebrated, and of course they had pretty harsh lives. So the celebration in a village was a celebration. I mean, the whole village got in on the deal. They just had a marvelous time. And if they're going to celebrate for five, six days, you're going to have to have quite a lot to drink. The problem at this wedding was they ran out, and they went to Jesus' mother. Now, Jesus' mother, Mary, is fascinating. He says, you know, she just goes to his son says they're out of wine. Now, Jesus' response is strange, and I find that William Barclay helps me a lot in his commentary. He says what Jesus replied really was this, Don't worry. You don't quite understand what's going on. Leave things to me, and I will settle them in my own way. That's more comfortable, isn't it? Also, the expression woman. From our point of view, it sounds abrupt, and it's just not the sort of thing we expect from the lips of Jesus. But it was not. It was a term of endearment. And he uses the same word when he's dying on the cross, and he looks down and sees Mary standing there with the Apostle John, and he says, Woman, behold thy son. John, behold thy mother. 
There was a love there. It's not abrupt as it would be in English. And so in English, we sort of really spoil it all. He was saying, Mum, don't worry. I'm going to deal with it. I may do it in a different way, but leave it to me. And she did, and her classic words to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Let me ask you, friend, as a Christian believer, have you really accepted that? Is that where you're coming from this morning? Do you do whatever Jesus tells you? You see, that's faith. That's trust. That's the place to which each of us needs to come. And some of us haven't reached that point yet. And it's so vital to understand. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Now, these jars are big. You notice what I read you? They held between 20 and 30 gallons, and there were six of them. Now, they were used for the actual ceremonial purification, where they were totally washed. But now they're being used to be filled with wine. And Jesus says to the, just fill the jars with water. So they fill them to the brink. That's all they had to do. But I think before we get into that, there are a couple of other things we ought to see. Notice this incident happened at a wedding feast. Jesus enjoyed being social. And if you as a Christian only enjoy being spiritual, you're going to have to check yourself out again. Notice where it happened. It happened in a little village in Galilee. And by the way, it was one of the dirtiest little villages we ever went through in Palestine. It was really quite sad to see it. It's a poor little town. Not very far from Nazareth, obviously walking distance. Notice also why this incident happened. When they had these celebrations for a feast, two things would be absolutely disgusting to the Jews. If anyone in that wedding got drunk, that was shame. Did you hear that? If anyone got drunk, that was shame. They didn't. That wine didn't get people drunk, and you wouldn't drink too much of it. The fact was it had to spread over a lot of days. So that's the first thing. Also notice, it would have been a terrible embarrassment for the host who happened to be the bridegroom if he ran out of wine. You always provided plenty. Remember, a lot of these people were very, very poor. They only sort of lived from the ground on which they lived. They didn't have very much. And this poor fellow had done something wrong in his calculations, or more people had turned up to the wedding. Whatever it was, he had run out of wine. And that would be a terrible shame on him. So Jesus steps in and saves the shame. Now, there are two beautiful things here. Notice, will you? Mary turned to Jesus whenever anything went wrong. She had lived with this fellow for 30 years, and she knew where the answers came from. If you had a problem, you turned to Jesus. And we are the same, aren't we? When we have a problem, we turn to Jesus. But there's something else. Mary had an incredible faith and trust there. She didn't understand what Jesus was going to do, even though he seemed to refuse her when he first she first spoke. But Mary believed that whatever it was, Jesus would do it, and you could rest on that. So she just let it all happen. She just said, do whatever he says, and left it there, and obviously went back to her friends. The thing was taken care of. So that's the picture we see here. And what we're seeing, Jesus just gave a simple kindness, an understanding of a situation that could have been so embarrassing, and Jesus just stepped in and put things right. Now, I want you to picture being those servants. You've got to get these incredibly big jars. You fill them all with water. And then what does Jesus say? He says, draw from them and take to the master of the feast, the master of ceremonies. Now, you can feel a goon if you're a servant doing this. Can you understand what's going on? You've just filled these pots with water, and this fellow says to you, now just draw a glass full and give it to the master of the feast. So they do. And the master of the feast tastes it, and it's absolutely magnificent. And he goes and draws the bridegroom aside and said, what have you done? The bridegroom says, why? Well, he said, usually they give the best wine first. 
but he said this new wine is absolutely wonderful. You can imagine the poor bridegroom, he's having a big enough week as it is, but he didn't know what was going on. He was perplexed too. What had happened? The wine that Jesus had provided was the best that could be provided, and it was a total, total miracle. There's no way to explain this one. Somebody said that if it had turned from wine to water, they'd still have believed it. But by the same token, this was a miracle. Jesus steps in, and with one act of kindness, he saves embarrassment for that situation. He gets the host off the hook in every sense of the world. We're going to be like Jesus in our lives. Then we're going to mix with people. Never are we going to be too spiritual to attend something that's social. And I believe this. In the invitations we receive to such things, we need to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Does the Holy Spirit want us there? Has he got something for us to do? One of the ladies in a Bible study group some years ago related this story that's always stayed with me. Her husband, in a business situation, was invited to a cocktail party. And he said, now, dear, you're going to have to come with me. And she said, I don't want to come. He said, I'm sorry, but you've got to. It's just part of the whole thing. She said, I don't want to stand around in a cocktail party for hours. He said, I'm sorry, you have to go. So she went, and she had to spend four hours in a cocktail party drinking tomato juice, or if you prefer it, tomato juice. But she had to drink it. And do you know what the Lord did? During the four hours, he brought her four other wives who were all in need, and each one heard about Jesus. And had she not gone to that cocktail party, those four women would never have heard about Jesus because they would never have met her. I think you have to understand that Jesus is ready to use every situation of our lives to his praise and glory. What he wants from us is our availability. As you go to work today, as you go around the things you have to do today, are you available for Jesus as Jesus was available to men and women? People out there hurt. People out there have needs. And because you have Jesus, you have the answer.